Hello Unity fans! In our previous video, our woodcutter's function came together nicely, allowing us to chop down and saw trees, then harvest the logs as resources and carry them home. Follow the link in the top right if you missed it. Today, we will see how easy it is to now expand on this system to include stonemasons and some rock for them to go to work on. First off, we need some new meeples, so we use the tool we created previously to save a few different stonemasons. I've linked to that video in the top right and in the description below. They need only a pickaxe and a carrying basket, so we're not going to swap tools around between hand and belt to perform different tasks this time around. We select some random characteristics for each one and save when we're happy until we have four different variations to use. Each one gets a reference to the hex unit script to control its actions, and we need to link up all the game objects correctly like before. We also need to add resources to the carrying baskets, which we position properly in the basket, being mindful of the order of the rocks. We want our first rock to be deep inside the basket, while the others can then be stacked on top in order. These rocks need to be harvested from bigger piles of rock. I've quickly created a few different arrangements of rock piles by altering the position and rotation of a few base rocks to give us some variation. It's the same idea as with the trees. Now we need a way to place the rocks on the map. The original tutorial series catered for urban, farm and plant features. We've used plants for trees up to now, and we're going to employ urban for rocks. To avoid confusion, we're going to rename everything that has to do with urban to stone, and while we're at it, rename all plant related items to trees. Visual Studio has a very useful feature I like to call the Composed Pirate. You can easily change all references to a variable name throughout the project code. We select the name we want to change, then press, and this is the Composed Pirate part, Control RR, and type in the new name. You can see how many changes in how many files will be made. When you're done, press enter and the change is applied. We do the same for all urban references and then change all plant references to trees as well. Finally, we also change the labels on the UI buttons. Next, we link these stone prefabs to the feature manager that handles the placement on the hex map. Remember that we could select three different urban levels and that the buildings increased in size as the level increased. We're just going to include all three our rock piles as options when placing any of the levels, as we're more interested in the number of piles than the size of the piles. Of course, we also need to state that our unit is now a stonemason, not a woodcutter anymore. We will get to allowing more than one unit type in a future video, but for now, we hard code the resource type as stone. Our world builder can't place rocks randomly when generating maps yet, which is something that would require a fair bit of extra logic. But we can now manually place rocks in the same way that we've been able to place trees up to now. And since the code that allocated the resource type to the seven internal positions on the hex was not wood specific, it automatically works for stone as well, creating the prefabs and setting up all the required behind the scenes information. Most of our methods, where they were independent of a specific resource type, also immediately work with stone instead of wood. But there are a few places where we have not yet generalized our code for different resource types. For example, the sequence of actions is set up for a woodcutter. The stonemason would not have to step back from the rocks like the woodcutter had to step back when the tree fell over. Also, the woodcutter has both a chop and a saw action which we can generalize as prepare and harvest actions, while the stonemason only needs one action, namely harvest. We currently have methods called chop resource, saw resource and connect saw, which is clearly resource specific. We can change the names of these methods to something generic like prepare resource, harvest resource and connect harvest action. Then we update them to cater for different resource types. If the resource type isn't wood, we can just exit the prepare action without doing anything. 
The same goes for stepping back after chopping. On the other hand, our step back to resource action currently initiates harvesting when it has been completed, so we can't skip it completely. Instead, when the resource isn't wood, we skip the stepping back part and only call the method to start harvesting. The harvesting method is changed for stone such that no tools are attempted to be swapped, since he only has the one tool. And the mine animation is played instead of the saw animation. This distinction is also made in the connect resource action method, where we also only dissolve a tree if the resource type is wood. Stepping back to the basket, picking it up and heading home works exactly the same as before. We still have to link the connect resource action method to the mining animation so that we know when a hit should be counted. And then we can test everything. It is possible to handle the actions for the different resources in other ways as well. We'll see what works best as we go along, but for now we implement it like this, where some actions are just skipped for some resources. Given how many videos our woodcutter's actions took to complete, this was quite easy and painless, and our stonemason goes about his business much like the woodcutter did. But our work isn't done yet. The rocks are not yet slowly disappearing from the map when being harvested, and a few small things could still be tweaked here and there to make them fit a bit better. Also, at the moment, you can have either woodcutters or stonemasons, but not both, since you only allow for one type of meeple, with its specific resources linked to the hex unit script. We need to expand on the hex unit script by changing these reference variables to arrays, so that prefabs for all the different types of resources can be handled. The code then needs to be updated to allow you to place different kinds of meeples and then determine the correct array elements to use for each specific type. But we'll get to that later. Please consider subscribing and stay notified if you'd like to see what we tackle next. Goodbye!